Hi everyone, I'm Claire Colby from Recro Business Services and today I'm talking to you about provisional tax and demystifying it. Hopefully a bit clearer for you. Who are we? We are a accounting, auditing and tax firm based in Cape Town. We've got about 26 years experience I have in the industry, going 12 years with 14 staff and I've built my business from scratch and I'm passionate about helping small businesses. And we know that you didn't start your business to worry about compliance and SARS and cash flows and all those things. So we help our clients build the businesses they desire to live the lives that you deserve. Let's get on to the tax. So we're going to cover what is provisional tax, who is a provisional taxpayer, why it's different to income tax. There seems to be a lot of confusion sometimes between the two when it's due and how it's calculated, what information is required and some risk areas you need to be aware of. So what is provisional tax? I find the easiest way to relate to this is if you work for someone, you get a pay slip every month and you'll see you have your gross salary and your employer deducts PAYE from this. So your employer is acting as an agent for SARS to collect the tax from you to pay across to SARS every month. So what provisional taxes is just like PAYE for non-salary income earners. So anything that's not going through your the employer PAYE system basically falls into provisional taxes. And just like PAYE, it's a tax paid in advance. So you est so PAYE, you see how much money you're earning and the employer deducts and take, pays it across. It's the same for provisional taxes. You estimate how much income you're earning for the year and you pay that the tax on that over to SARS. So who is a provisional taxpayer? Now, it's very important that SARS changed a number of years ago the onus on the taxpayer to recognize themselves a provisional taxpayer or not. Many years ago, when I first started, um, SARS used to send you a little note and say, you're not a provisional taxpayer, submit a provisional tax report form. It's not like that anymore, and it hasn't been like that for a while. If you're a provisional tax payer and you don't put your forms in, SARS is going to penalize you. And you can't say, oh, I didn't know. So anyone above the interest thresholds, 23 and 35 or over 65s, if you earn rental income, if you are getting any income that is not a salary, you need to register and you need to get your provisional tax returns in. Um, Anything that's, as I said, not subject to PAYE. If you're a sole proprietor, you've got your own business, um, you are a director of a company. And guys, if you're earning cash, cash is income. So you need to pay tax on that cash. It doesn't count as non-tax income. So how does this whole thing work and how does provisional tax fit together with income tax? So the tax year runs from the 1st of March to the 28th of February. Okay, so for example, here we're using 2021 tax year. 2021 tax year starts on the 1st of March, 2020 and ends on the 28th of February, 2021. That's the 2021 tax year. All individuals end at the end of February. Most companies end at the end of February. So I'm just gonna use that for my example here just to make it simple. Provisional tax returns are due halfway through the tax year, six months, and then at the end of the tax year. So your first provisional is due in this example at the end of August, and the second one is due at the end of February. At the end of February is, the, is when you put your second one in, and that's your two provisional tax returns. Then at the beginning of July, tax season opens. And this means you can start submitting your tax returns. So if you note at that point that your estimates weren't totally correct, you can put a third provisional tax return in by the end of September, and you won't be as severely pen penalized if it's, if it's that, um, it's a bit out. That's optional, it's not required, and 95% of people don't, look at, don't do that, okay. So tax season to submit the actual return. So provisional tax is estimates, um, your actual income tax return is the actuals. That's when you put all the documents and supporting information in. 
tax season generally from the 1st of July to 23rd of November or there and thereabouts for uh, individual taxpayers. And provisional taxpayers have got until the end of January, but honestly, we encourage people, get, the, get it in by the end of November. You don't really want a tax return hanging over you over Christmas and New Year while you're trying to actually rest and recover from the year. So that sets out the dates there. As you can see, the estimates again are provisional taxes that goes during the tax year and the actuals, your income tax return is submitted after the income tax year. For companies, they have until a year after the year end to submit their actuals. Okay, yeah. so that's just how it works. So how is provisional tax calculated? But simply, as I said, again, it's an estimate. You usually don't have your actual figures until a month, a couple of months after year end. So the first one in August, you, we usually take income until June or July and apply a pro rata estimate to that to say how much you would have earned up to the end of August. February, again, the same. Take what you've earned until the end of January and do a pro rata to the end of February, taking into account any abnormal events um, that we know about at that point. It's an estimate, it can't be properly accurate because you haven't finished the month before you have to pay it. We always encourage people to do proper calculations at both periods, not just taking last year and just adding 10% or using the base income. Because especially in the last few years, the economy has been under pressure. Different industries have had so many different constraints in that we don't want our clients paying more tax than they need to. And we want them to actually you know, be able to budget if there is extra, extra tax and stuff required. Um, it's, it's quite important being on top of this because if they're not accurate, especially the February one, there are some quite heavy penalties that um, will be incurred. So information you need, everything to do with your, your income and finances, your year-to-date salary slip, any non salary income, rental, interest, business income, business expenses, um, any contracts, consulting, yeah, any fees, all those kind of things that you're earning that haven't got, haven't got tax, profit shares, and then any deductions that you can claim, medical aid, RA deductions, all of those things. You send, get, get that, send that to us, your accountants, and we'll do a calculation for you. Then, the risk areas that you need to look out for, February submissions must be 90% accurate, as I said. If they're not, you're going to have quite high penalties on that. Also, people tend to ignore the turnover portion in a, a provisional tax return, and that's how much income you estimated to earn during the year. And not many people know about this, but if you get that wrong, or it's too far out from what your actuals are. And this happens when people just use last year and increase 10% or, you know, thumb sucker figure and they're not using a you know, proper calculation on the figure. It triggers an audit. And no one wants more audits from SARS. <laughs> I can guarantee you that. I think everyone will agree. So penalties for under declaration. Um, are up to 200%, and that's also if you don't pay on time. So provisional taxes, if you don't pay by the end of, end of August or the end of February, when the, if that's your, your tax season, you even pay a day late. It's an immediate penalty. And unless there are really extenuating circumstances, and I mean... You know, we've had a client stuck in the Bahamas before, so that was extenuating circumstances and we could prove the flights were delayed and there were, I don't think it was a hurricane or something. Unless it's like something like that and you can prove, they're not going to accept that you're going to have to pay that penalty. So best get it on time because the best way to save tax is to be compliant and to avoid penalties. So that is provisional taxes. I hope I've demystified a bit of it for you. If not, don't fear, we're just a call away and we are happy to help out with any tax issues. 
and help you understand your numbers and use your numbers to build the business that you desire and live the life you deserve. Thank you very much. Give us a ring for any assistance that you need.